But let's read it and jump forward. If you show partiality and are committing sin and are convicted by the law's transgressors, for whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. He, for he who said, do not commit adultery also said, do not murder. If, you got a decision to make, friend. You do not commit adultery, but murder. You have become a transgressor of the law. You do one thing wrong. You make one mistake. You commit one sin. You violate one scripture. The scripture you don't even know. It's how the law works, right? You can't commit murder, show up in court and say, I didn't know that law. Still guilty. So speak and act. That's where our sin comes in and what we say and what we do as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. Some of you believers are like, I won't be judged, I'm a believer, I'm not gonna be judged. You won't be condemned, but you will be judged. Everyone will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. This is really clear in Revelation at the end. That we'll all stand before the judgment seat of Christ and our lives will be judged and will be judged not for our salvation or damnation, but for our rewards in eternity. Your life matters, it really does count. Everything you're doing will be judged. For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. God is perfect. Heaven is perfect. God's royal law is perfect. And it perfectly condemns, judges everyone as a transgressor, as a rebel, as a lawbreaker. He has transitioned from love to justice. You've all been lied to. All religions don't save. God doesn't love everyone forever. You don't just die and go to a better place. Some people die and they go to hell and they live eternally under the conscious, eternal torment of the wrath of God. The wrath of God, friends, the wrath of God. Hear me in this. It is mentioned in the Bible more often than the love of God. More often than the love of God. The Bible does say that God is love, but more often than the love of God is mentioned, the holiness of God, the most common attribute of God mentioned in the whole Bible, the bedrock of it all. God is holy. God is good. God is right. God is altogether only and always without sin, clean and pure and undefiled and, and uncompromised. You've all been lied to. Not all gods are the same. Not all religions are the same. Not all saviors save. And there's not one good person among us. We're all guilty under the law of our good king. And the Bible speaks of the wrath of God with some 20 words on some 600 occasions. So we say, not Jesus, he's very loving. Jesus talks about hell more than anyone in the whole Bible. Jesus rules over hell. Jesus decides who goes to hell. Jesus decides what the sentence is in hell. You will live forever. The only difference is where. And you can't look at someone who's in line behind you and say, I'm better than them. All that means is they will burn a little hotter than you, but you'll both burn together forever. The Bible says that hell was built for Satan and demons, but there's room for you too. And many of you are living in the path of the wrath of God and you're living under therapeutic, moralistic, spiritual nonsense. Like, I just need to love myself. That's insanity. Who are you? You don't sit on a throne. You're not a royal king. You're not the law. You're not the judge. You're not the executioner. You're a guilty transgressor. That's what you are. Stop believing the nonsense. I'm a good person with a good heart who's lived a good life because that's a damnable lie. It's a damnable lie. You cannot save yourself. You cannot change yourself. You cannot vindicate yourself. 
You're in danger, friend. You're in dire danger. Some of you are living with a gun at your head, waiting for the day when the trigger is pulled and it's nothing but what Jesus calls grinding of teeth forever in torment. It's my job to tell the truth. It's your job to make a decision. And then he uses another word. Mercy. God loves us. We're damnable and in grave danger. And because he loves us, he gives mercy. How many of you, as I was screaming at you, you were hoping there was a remedy for your condition, a hope for your salvation? How many of you were hoping I didn't just end the sermon there and walk away? Right? Now that we've stacked up all the kindling, my job is done. And you're the kindling. Mercy. Mercy is where you deserve something and you don't get it. You get something wonderful instead of something awful. Every time the Bible speaks of God's love, it's pointing to Jesus' cross. James knew this. He watched his brother get crucified. And then after Jesus rose from the dead, he would have explained to James why he died. So that God could still be a good king with a royal law and love guilty transgressors without losing his holiness or his love. And so the holiness of God and the love of God, they, they intersect at the cross of Jesus and he calls that mercy. 